Okay, good Monday evening, everybody, live and direct from House Onik. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with an update of your weather forecast in and around the Mid-South. And things are looking pretty quiet for right now, but we do have visitors on the way where it comes to rain in the Mid-South. We'll be looking for more potential for rainfall as we head into the course of the next couple of days. So if you have any plans for outdoors, get set for some soaking weather out there. And we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little while. Currently pretty dry here in the Mid-South area, but we'll be looking for more potential problems out there as we get into the course of the rest of the day tomorrow. Chances of severe weather, not really seeing all that much going on at this point in time, so definitely good news where that's concerned. But once again, this is something that really needs to be uh, paid attention to because, again, there's going to be wet driving conditions out there. Windshield wipers will be necessary, the whole thing, as we get into tomorrow. So please keep that in mind if you're going to be doing anything outdoors into the rest of Tuesday. Welcoming our Facebook viewers, it looks like things are doing pretty well on the tinfoil on the receiver end of things. And so far, Periscope and Twitter talk is looking pretty good at this point in time. So we'll go ahead and get started for Monday evening. And thanks for joining us again from House Onik. Dog's excited about something outside. Sorry about the background noise going on there. We don't have much going on yet, but we will coming up over the next couple of days, so stay tuned for more on that. Again, forecast here in the blue bar and at the bottom portion of the red bar, social media going on, and also, again, available the forecast at wreg.com slash weather for more information about the complete News Channel 3 forecast, which we will take a look at coming up here in just a little while. St. Francis Cam fading what was left of sunset view out there, and a beautiful view of sunset tonight from the City Hall Cam in Germantown, just north of Germantown High School for this evening. And if you'd like to see more of those, all you have to do is go to the address in the black bar, again, wreg.com slash weathercams, and you can find out more about that and about our weather bug system as well. That's also on there to see live, real-time weather across the Mid-South and a great opportunity to see more. If you'd like to be a sponsor of one of those sites, contact Tim Simpson, and he'll be able to contact you, get you in contact with more people who know a little bit more about what's going on. Welcome to everybody who's tuning in for tonight. Drop your location, and if you have it, your weather report into the comments section. We'd love to know more about what it is with weather you're experiencing at this point in time. And again, so far, pretty quiet in the Mid-South. If you have questions about the forecast, drop me in and we'll be as specific as we can. If you're from a generic area like Jackson, be specific. Let me know uh, where what state you're in. You could be just about any place. We've had people checking in from overseas as well, which is great to know. But if you're Jackson, Mississippi, that's a far different forecast than Jackson, Tennessee, Jackson, Arkansas, Jackson, Missouri. You kind of get where I'm going with this. So please, if you don't mind on that. Currently, again, on radar, let's go ahead and bring this up full so everybody on Facebook can see more about what's going on. This is Irma, or at least what's left of it anyway. The rain is now moving its way across the Tennessee River and into and around portions of the rest of the Mid-South area from east to west. We have no severe weather. We technically don't even have any lightning at this time. All that's been left behind and things remain very quiet out across much of the area, so pretty quiet for right now. Rain has not reached the metro area but it will within the course of the next few hours. Remember that as this storm gets a little bit closer to us or the remnants of it, this thing is moving into very dry air. So this is going to have to kind of overpower that dry air first before the rain can make it all the way down to the ground. So there's really not much of anything expected out of this until, in the metro area at least, until and after about midnight tonight, and that's going to be about it. Uh, Amy Harris, glad you're uh, appreciating that you appreciate the updates on Facebook. Thank you very much. Nancy Alice Powell from Fraser, Victoria Fondren, Strayhorn, Sarah. Haven't been down that way in a while. Randy McDonald, Middleton, Tennessee. Tim Simpson, home stomping territory. Chastity Brewer McFarlane from Hernando. Diane Watkins from Victoria, Mississippi. Let me see if my phone will cooperate with me. Amy Harris from West Memphis this evening. Thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, let's see who else we got here. Randy McDonald, thank you very much for tuning in. Karen S. Davis from South Haven. Chris Hafner, good evening. Mary Jewell from South Fulton, Tennessee. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. And Donna Kelsey Faulkner from Collierville. This is, again, going to be more of the same over the course of the next couple of days. Let's switch over to Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and you can see even more activity uh, coming on through here. Let me go a little farther afield. Let's go down to Birmingham into Alabama and show you more about that. 
as we get even more rainfall uh, starting to make its way into the Mid-South area. We'll continue to see more of those chances of rainfall. You can actually start to see uh, the center of circulation just to the east of Birmingham and into and around the area between there and Atlanta. Just a little bit of circulation going on here, but that is the remnant low of what was Irma just a couple of days ago, making its way up and to the north and to the west. It's going to be curving our direction uh, into and around the area. So again, decent amounts of rainfall. That's going to be about the main thing we're looking at at this time. And lots of rainfall over Atlanta and some pretty breezy winds as well as we've seen over the course of the last couple of days as the storm system has moved a little bit closer to us at this time. So looking again at some pretty breezy conditions out there. We'll talk about how breezy coming up in just a little while. Okay, excuse me for forgetting to do this real quick. Let me make certain that we have the right source up here so everybody can see what's going on. Thank you very much. Linda Bush from Eugene, Oregon. Hope you're not getting too much smoke out that direction. I'm sure you got some pretty good fires. We'll take a look at that in just a little while as well. Billy Franklin from Lexington as well. Thanks a lot for dropping on by. Betty Smith from Halls, Tennessee. Doesn't look too terrible, but we'll be keeping our eyes on that. Uh, Lisa Young, Squeaker Barbieri, thank you very much for dropping on by. Bozo Wolfolk, wel welcome to the show from Senatobia. Randy McDonald, Jose and a threat to the United States. Good question. We'll answer that coming up here in just a little bit. Visible satellite picture, again, showing Irma, what was left of it, now spreading out over the southeastern United States. Now no, not really too much more of a threat at this time, but it will be, again, traversing the southeast United States before heading on out of here. Currently, again, good news from the National Interagency Fire Center. We do not have, again, a lot of major new fires taking place. Five of them, five new fires were confirmed for today, but as of right now, looking out west, the current large incidents going on are limited to the area around California, Oregon, into Washington State, Idaho, and Montana, and a couple new ones in Wyoming and down toward northwestern Colorado. So we are seeing a little bit more activity uh, going on in these locations, and a couple of these fires, five or six of these are completely uncontained uh, and are just burning out of control, so we'll be seeing, again, more problems with that out there. Actually, there's been some smoke in and around portions of the Mid-South over the last couple of days from the occasional burning of fields in Arkansas and western areas of Mississippi, even around uh, west-central Tennessee, some smoke plumes being reported uh, into around the area here as uh, so seen by the uh, early model uh, surface smoke forecast, but a lot of the smoke as you might expect, is going on out into the western United States. A lot of plumes of smoke out there, very smoky and very, uh, again, lots of dry conditions out there, drought situation out that direction. So a lot being, in, again, in the way of problems with visibility out into that area. Uh, Leanne Kirksey, hi. How much are we going to get from Irma? We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Bozo Wolfolk, is Senatobi going to get some rain? Yes, you're going to be seeing a lot more from that coming up. Irma is now a tropical storm, winds of 45 miles per hour. That's lost about 100 miles per hour in velocity as we have in the winds at least that we have seen from the last about say uh, 36 hours or so. That's where we've seen again a decent amount of those winds making their way on out of the picture but it is now nothing more than a moderate tropical storm and it is still going to be causing us some problems. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Disturbance out into the eastern Atlantic between South America and Africa. This one, again, is looking at about a 10% chance of developing into something. So far, it doesn't look like a problem, but this could be our L name storm, which will be Lee. We'll be watching that again over the next few days. Let's take a look at Jose in just a second. We'll see again what's going on with Irma's approach here. It's a tropical storm. By tomorrow morning, it should be a tropical depression. D for depression, S for storm. The orange area indicates the area where we're going to see tropical storm force winds of 39 miles per hour plus and higher gusts are going to be possible in that orange shaded area. The track of Irma could take it as far over as Middle Tennessee or could drop it to northern Mississippi. It could go anywhere in this white cone zone. The main track at this time looks like it's going to be crossing the Tennessee River late tomorrow evening and into Tuesday, uh, Wednesday morning early. It should be sitting right around Jackson, Tennessee, 
losing power all the time and making its way back up over the Ohio River Valley as we get into afternoon on Tuesday, taking the winds and everything else away from it at this time. Jose is taking a very interesting track at this point in time. It is here, uh, south of Bermuda. It's expected to curve around and loop the loop from the path it was on earlier and then start taking off again back toward the northwest. Now again, this is not good news for the area up around Florida or the East Coast, but keep in mind that the farther you go, notice that this track gets even wider as we go throughout the next several days. That's because the uncertainty increases the farther you go into the forecast where things could change a lot easier. So Jose is here, but is going to be looping around and heading generally back toward the Bahamas into the next couple of days. That's, again, not inaccuracy. That's not a government conspiracy or anything like that. These are actually some of the best computer models that you can deal with on this. And here's just an example of this uh, from the tropical from uh, tropicalatlantic.com. This is going to show you a little bit about the spaghetti models and what they do. And this is a really cool graphic to kind of take a look at once I put this into uh, some perspective here. Make certain all of our Twitter and Periscope viewers can see all of this. Over here on the right-hand side are the different models that we can choose from. And as we pick these things, you can see that mostly they are going to be in agreement with each other for the most part. But in the next about five days or so, as we pick more and more models, they kind of generally go in the same direction. But again, some of them kind of wander off one direction or another. Now that one we just clicked on, that one sends the forecast uh, model right up past Bermuda and keeps on going. A couple of them uh, are going to be kind of making a turn a little bit farther. There's another one going straight on up to the north past Bermuda. But a lot of these models at this time, as we select more and more of them, uh, this one, the EGR2 model, is taking this right over the Bahamas and right toward Florida. Now, it's in the minority, but it still needs to be watched. So if you're traveling anywhere from Miami uh, all the way up to, say, Jacksonville, Georgia, into the Carolinas, I would watch this storm very, very carefully to see what exactly we wind up with on this into the next uh, couple of days just to see what goes on. Now, here in the Mid-South, again, strong winds uh, into the area from late this afternoon into this evening and overnight. Winds of about maybe 20 to 30 miles per hour could be a possibility into around the area tonight and into tomorrow, so would not be surprised to see some gusty winds out there, but we're not expecting anything in the way of severe weather on that. Linda Bush, smoke pushed away from the fires off into the Pacific Ocean. Oh, that's uh, bad to see. Again, uh, having to wear masks out there, that's something else right there. Uh, Randy McDonald, have we studied the earthquakes in Soda Springs, Idaho? Uh, not personally, I have not, but I'm in contact with a lot of people from the Center for Earthquake Research and Information at the University of Memphis. Very good place to go to for earthquake research. I'll see if they have anything to say about that. All right, everybody asking about what's going on tonight and with Irma. Lots of, again, winds kicking up east of us. Not really that much going on. The numbers you're looking at on screen are wind gusts, and as you can see, there's not that much going on. We've got a 22 mile per hour wind gust in Selmer at Robert Sibley Airport. As we go farther and farther to the east and southeast, you start to pick up even more wind gust and even higher. We got one of 48 miles per hour on the Alabama Georgia state line, uh, 53 mile per hour wind gust just east of Atlanta, 40 mile per hour wind gust southwest of Atlanta, going up into around South Carolina and areas in and around the Appalachians. 55 mile per hour wind gust reported uh, somewhere in western North Carolina. Uh, let's see, in the Highlands Airport area, and then a 59 mile per hour wind gust a little bit farther over from that into around uh, northern parts of South Carolina into around Hogback Mountain. So we do have, again, some decent amounts of wind out there. Now, we're not going to be picking up that much. We're going to be seeing some fairly breezy winds out that direction, but there's really just not that much going on that we are going to have to worry about into the rest of the forecast. You Any day now. <sighs> Excitable Shorkies, their voices carry. Apologies on that. 
Again, for the rest of the evening for tonight, we're going to be seeing that storm system come up our direction and then rocket away from us back into and around the area to the northeast. So it should be taking off and leaving into the area and heading away from us. But there will also be the possibility that we have to make certain that we keep an eye on this as well with the potential of heavy rainfall. Now, the heaviest rainfall of all is going to be well to our east. The Carolinas into around Middle Tennessee, northern Alabama, northern Georgia. This is not a severe weather map this is indicating where the heaviest rainfall is going to be taking place that could be a trigger for flash flooding and that's the main thing we're looking at so we're going to be picking up some rainfall but it looks like most of the mid-south is going to be escaping the chance of heavy rainfall out there going into the forecast let's see what's going on out there for tonight and into the rest of the day into tomorrow for the mid-south area we've got again the winds that are going to be picking up into tomorrow morning into and around uh, 4 o'clock in the morning, the winds will be out of the north for the most part at about 10 to 15 miles an hour. Higher wind gusts back toward Tupelo and Corinth, and that'll be again very, very early into around Tuesday morning. High temperatures tomorrow because of the rain and lots of it. Good chance of rain, 70 to 90 percent across much of the Mid-South uh, out across the area tomorrow. And again, decently heavy amounts of showers out across the area as well. Half an inch of rain by early tomorrow morning into around 1 o'clock in the afternoon and then another third to an inch of rainfall on top of that by the time you pick the kids up from school into tomorrow. Totally cloud cover tomorrow, not seeing much of any sunshine whatsoever. Cool into tomorrow night, temperatures in the upper 50s to lower 60s. Rain will start to taper off only about a tenth of an inch through about midnight and then another tenth of an inch as we head into Wednesday morning. Winds as we head into around uh, Tuesday as well. That's going to be interesting because sustained winds will be at about 10 to 20 miles per hour as that front or that, that storm system approaches the area. And wind gusts could be around maybe 20 miles per hour, somewhere in there, by early tomorrow morning. So everybody could see some choppy driving on the roadways. And that will be, again, what we see uh, with the problems out there for later on tonight. Donna Kelsey Faulkner, yeah, they disagree with me about a lot of things, unfortunately, from time to time. Uh, again, this is going to be they comment again as they look out the door and wonder what they're seeing out that direction as well. Uh, Renee Vaughn Homewood, good afternoon and good evening. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, rainfall chances into Tuesday, probably around an inch or so for much of the area, including northern Mississippi and into around areas of southeast Arkansas. That's going to be the heaviest amount of rainfall along and south of I-40. North of I-40, you're not going to pick up quite as much. Less chances of rainfall, of heavy rainfall, but there still is going to be that possibility that if we do pick up enough, there is going to be some flash flooding. So, again, that's going to be something we need to watch as well. Into Wednesday, it'll be a little bit warmer, 60s and 70s for high temperatures. Chances of rainfall, yes, but that starts to taper off again. Best chance of rain east of the Mississippi River. And we'll be talking again about enough to get the windshields wet. So definitely want to get the windshield wipers tuned up and ready to go. Rain really begins to head out of here by Wednesday night. And then by the time we hit low temperatures Wednesday evening into Thursday morning, Mid to upper 50s to lower 60s, and that, again, is going to be pretty nice. Now, the neat thing about this rotation off of this storm is going to be that as we go through Wednesday, let me see if they have, there's, okay, right there is the expected center of circulation. If you look, well, hang on a second, it went away for a moment. If you look right here in the center portion of your screen between around Dyersburg, Covington, Blytheville, Mississippi River, south of the Boot Heel. That's the center of what was, at one point in time, a Category 5 hurricane. That's going to be passing over the area with winds of about 5 to 15 miles an hour, and that's going to be making its way up and away from the Mid-South into the course of the next couple of days. So we're going to be seeing that leave the area as we head toward Wednesday afternoon. Now notice the winds right after that. Where are they going? They're coming in out of the southwest. That's interesting because over the next couple of days, we are going to be seeing some much warmer temperatures. We're going to be back in the mid-80s by Thursday, back to sunshine as well. And on Friday, we could be seeing some mid to upper 80s, not exactly a heat wave, but definitely, again, noticeably warmer across much of the area and chances of rain gone from the forecast out there. Highs on Saturday, also in the mid to upper 80s, so a great weekend coming up and not expecting anything in the way of rainfall out there. A few clouds into Saturday. 
And we'll take a quick peek into Sunday and see high temperatures as well in the mid to upper 80s, so very warm out there and plenty of sunshine with just a few clouds across much of the Mid-South. Now, we can't do much with astronomy tonight. The clouds of Irma overspreading the area. It was a great sunset tonight, but that was going to be about it. And so there's not going to be much to do in the way of looking at the stars or doing any stargazing until what's left of Irma leaves the area. So what can you do? We'll take a look at this. The grand finale is now four days away. In just about another couple of days, the Cassini spacecraft is going to be plunging into Saturn. It's going to be making a nosedive. The end of mission is here, and this is going to be making its way to a grand finale finish as it plunges into Saturn's atmosphere. Uh, it could They could have made the decision to crash it into one of Saturn's moons or into one of the ring particles that surrounds the planet, but they're not going to be doing that because they don't want to risk any contamination. As long as this thing has been out there, uh, it is possible that there still could be some germs on this thing from Earth, and so they don't want to risk infecting uh, any of the other planets of the Saturnian system with any possible contamination from Earth. Again, this is still wild territory out there, and in several dozen years, several, uh, hopefully not hundreds of years, but hopefully sometime in the future, humans will be living somewhere on the moons of Saturn, and we don't want to spoil it for them beforehand. So Cassini will be dropping into Saturn's atmosphere Coming up this Friday, it'll be a grand spectacular finale, and it's going to be plunging its way into the atmosphere. It's been making these shorter and shorter trips around Saturn, and eventually it's going to be just, again, dropping into the atmosphere and burning up. So Cassini has given us these incredible pictures of the Saturn system out there and a great way to explore science a billion miles out in the solar system, moving again at some amazing velocities out that direction, and it's about ready to end the mission in spectacular fashion. So if you'd like to see more about this one at this point in time, uh, this is something really to take a look at that's very cool from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and NASA as Cassini sadly winds up an amazing mission. Going to miss seeing the pictures from out that direction as it has orbited the uh, ringed planet for quite some time at this point in time. Uh, Randy Mc McDonald, if that is the sign you're talking about that uh, technically has to do with the biblical uh, what's going on in the, in the skies and the stars, uh, God will do what he wants to do when he wants to do it on there. I had a pastor at University of Kansas at Emanuel Lutheran Church who was always very fond of saying that prophecy is a very poor guide to the future and that God will do what he wishes to do whenever he wants to do it. So uh, as of right now, I don't put too much stock in it because there have been a lot of very interesting predictions by a lot of very interesting religious leaders over the last several dozen years that have not been the best out there. And I prefer to leave uh, any interpretation like that up to the theology theologists, if at all possible, or theologians, I guess I should say. This, again, is just one of those scientific things that is really cool. God has made us an, an incredible uh, solar system to take a look at, and this is one of the ways that we can do uh, justice by that and to him and to honor him is to be able to use our brains for science for things like that so uh, the September 23rd thing I've heard about it yes I don't put much stock in it but thank you very much for asking about that and I do appreciate you asking the question at least a lot of people don't even do that much if you'd like to know more about what's going on in and around the Mid-South when it comes to science and geography and earthquakes and hurricanes and all kinds of other stuff, please drop by my Facebook page, picture of my son Tristan at the Ground Zero 9-11 Memorial in New York City when we were there about a year and a half ago on a college trip to Rutgers, stopping by for a little bit and a great opportunity to see that on this Remembrance Day from that dark day several years ago. And of course on my Facebook page for my Twitter page, twitter.com slash aonic underscore WRAG3. Thank you to everybody who's been sending in some just absolutely spectacular pictures out there. Had a good one this evening from a viewer down around Florida catching a rainbow. Very nice view of that. And from everybody's webcams out that direction, uh, some beautiful conditions out in Collierville, Germantown, even ones from the National Park Service. If you'd like to see more about those, all you have to do is go to my Instagram page at instagram.com slash aonic no underscore necessary WREG3 for more information on that. If you'd like to see the News Channel 3 
seven-day forecast. That's available again at wrag.com slash weather. And if you'd like to catch up on the forecast and get some great amounts of news, tune in tomorrow morning to AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio. Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 a.m., I'll be on with Talk Back Live with Bob and Josh. And if you can't catch it on the radio because you're not close enough to Memphis, all you have to do is go to talkbacklivenetwork.org. And again, something to take a look at there uh, to find out more about what's going on. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. It looks like we're losing our signal from Facebook, so we will have to kind of cut it short for tonight. And thanks to everybody for dropping on by and keeping an eye on the weather. For more information, go to austin.onik at wrg.com and send me an email live and direct from House Onik in Memphis. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us. Stay safe out there tonight and keep an eye on the weather with News Channel 3 on air and online.